Hey! Is, every, is everybody uh, on here yet? <laughs> Am I the only one late? <laughs> All right. So, Christian, do we have questions yet in the comments? Uh, let, me, let me take a look. Um, while I prepare this. So basically, I'm just going to be answering questions about the new platform, Proker.com. Um, I'll probably do a little bit of drawing at some point here, just like some quick sketches. So uh, if you guys want to ask questions, head over to uh, Proker.com slash 503. Pretty sure that's on the screen. Um, and uh, that, that's going to take you to the Proko page where this is streaming, and you can just leave a comment there on that page. And that's where we're going to be taking the actual questions. Um, all right. Let's see. Christian, um, you got, what's the first question? Erwin asks, what is the best way to have a plan of improvement if I don't uh, have, a, have a yet a big budget to take a lot of classes? Um, well, I'll practice at the most. Like the, 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 big, the most important part of getting good at drawing actually isn't um, the information. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a chunk of it, and that's definitely going to help you practice correctly. But uh, the practice part of it is the most important. And so if you can only afford one class, you can't take a bunch of classes and workshops that are you know, $800 for, for a few weeks. Like, take one class, right, and, and spend a year on it. Um, it you're, I'm pretty sure if you're really dedicated to drawing, you can afford like a hundred dollar class online, like something like my figure drawing course, for example, which is very fundamental. It's got a whole bunch of lessons that if you spend, you know, a few weeks on each lesson, you're going to improve a lot. And, and if you, pr you know, if you practice what you watch in those lessons, you're going to improve a lot and a hundred bucks. I mean, I guess in some countries that, that is quite a bit, but, um, you know, most of the figure drawing courses also not most, a, a big chunk of the figure drawing course is also on YouTube for free. So you could start with that. I have, I have hundreds of free lessons on YouTube. So if you really just can't afford anything, then just do that stuff um, and practice. Um, any, anything about the platform? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Didier asks, uh, what was the hardest thing to do for Proco 2.0 and why? The hardest thing to do? Um, I mean, it, it, it took four years to develop it. Um, so I think the hardest part was just going through that process of, of planning and executing the whole thing. I mean, the, the, whole, the whole process was difficult. Um, it's a tough question. It, it, it's, it's hard to remember because it's been four years in the making of what the hardest part was, but um, maybe just like organizing, keeping everything organized and prioritizing what's important um that that's pretty pretty challenging i think because it's like i get super excited with every feature that we come up with <laughs> and then and then we have like 100 features we want to make but if we just like try to do everything it, it's not going to happen uh so yeah that, that's that's tough it's cutting those those babies that i i, I really want By the way, in the comments, uh, I'm going to I'm going to pull up one of my pose packs. Um, in the comments, which one should I draw from? If, if you if you're not sure, go to program.com/browse and then go to the tools section and there's all my pose packs and you could let me know which one I should draw from. I'm reading the comments, so I'll, I'll yeah. be able to tell them. Yeah. He's he's um and you could do that on YouTube as well. Are you on YouTube as well? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, Fraser asks, you mentioned in the roadmap that you're moving away from traditional forum design for the community. Can you explain what you're moving towards? I can't quite picture what you have in mind. Wait, I, I'm moving away from what? Uh, traditional forum design. Oh, yeah, traditional forum design. So, yeah, so right now we it's like a list of categories when you go to the community, right? And, and then when you go into it, you have a list of topics. And then you go into the topics, and then you have a thread. Um, what we're probably going to do... There's two options, and actually maybe you guys could tell us what you think is best. Um, one option is um, it's, it's a similar thing, 
but it's like instead of categories we organize them as like rooms and then you um i guess it's it's tough without showing the design it, it's very similar it's just a it's a different design for it it's not designed like a forum but the other one which is completely different structure is instead of categories that you go into on the left would be like a filter of um of tags and you have one stream of all the topics in there but you just filter them by the tags like drawing and illustration you could select whichever ones you're interested in and then it'll populate all the topics and then you can sort by popularity or, or the latest stuff or high or whatever um, so I guess moving away from categories and just having everything as like a big stream and then you cat you can filter on the left kind of like when you go to like Amazon right you or any store store that you browse through you usually have like one area you got all your products um, and then you can search within so it filters also by your the thing you searched for but then on the left you have these filters that you can apply um, and then so when people are posting uh, a new topic they can select from like a bunch of different hashtags or something to apply to that topic does that make sense uh, can you turn it up a bit? Really? Yeah. Hello? Can you hear me now? Am I loud? It's, it's peaking though. Hello? That's probably okay. That's probably. I'll just move it closer. Yeah. yeah that's fine. How's. Here, I'll just. I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How does this look, guys? Yeah. Is that all right? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> now we're gonna have this giant ISO. Yeah. That's there. probably okay. That's probably fine. Yeah. Okay. Oh, but now it's casting a shadow. There. All right. Anybody telling me what to draw yet? Uh, somebody mentioned hands. Uh, hands. Somebody mentioned the Proko skull. Yeah, the Proko skull. This little guy. Draw that. I could warm up with a skull. And actually, give, give me another question because I gotta tune up my pencil. Um, well, Pedro asks, will members of the community be able to post their own tutorials slash videos with tips and tricks? Their own uh, member own tutorials. I mean, you guys could post your tutorials and like helpful resources and stuff in the community. But as far as posting your own lessons, like and having them show up as lessons or courses. Uh, in the in the actual store area, not yet. We we we're, we're keeping it curated to to make sure everything's super high content. But if you think you have really good content that you want to show us, um, email us, um, and we'll we will uh, look at, into adding you as a teacher. But like, yeah, our, our standards are pretty high for who we accept as teachers. We want to make sure that like. Everything in the in the content that you're putting up is is really good, high quality. But if it's just like a tutorial or something, like a, a link to a blog post that you did, yeah, go ahead and post it in, into the category that it fits into. Next question. Yeah. Uh, how often do you plan to announce challenges? Uh, the challenges right now are monthly. Um, we might increase that. It might be more than monthly. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Whoops. It might, it might be more frequent than mo monthly later. Um, but right now I, I think we're going to stick to monthly challenges as we were, we've been doing on, uh, on Instagram. But yeah, we're, we're moving to challenges now on Proco. So the next challenge that we're going to announce on Monday is going to be announced on Proco.com, um, and so people. So now instead of it being like all over Instagram, and you have to just like look for the hashtag Proco Challenge, uh, now we're, you know you, you'll be able to just go to a dedicated page and see people's work in progress, and then like final submissions, and then the community will be able to upvote their own favorites, and we'll have a community uh, community winner as well. Right. All right, a little Proko skull. 
my god, I haven't... Guys, I honestly haven't drawn in months. That's a horrible thing to admit, huh? You got this, dude. I got this. You got this. Is this another oh. kangaroo in the making? It might be. <laughs> <laughs> kangaroo worked out well. So. The ca- oh, did it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I like it. Uh, okay, okay, here I go. <laughs> um, there, we can also keep me on there. All right. And I have the skull right here in front of me, so. Uh, no, we're good. That's perfect. Got a little down view on it. Let me know if you'd like another question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, is there a way to post examples for criticism? Um, what do you mean? <laughs> Exam- well, examples of what? Uh, I'm assuming it's the person is asking if they can post their artwork for criticism. Of course. That's what the whole site is about. <laughs> it, the the big improvement here to Procodac, uh, you know, Procodac.com here is like, there's a community now behind the library of course or of courses and lessons and stuff and so um yeah absolutely D- do it P- post your your stuff for for criticism and then people in the community you will, will help and and then you even as a you know someone who's a beginner try to um try to help others as well with whatever you can you know you, you might not be able to help somebody with their anatomy assignments but if somebody's asking about feedback and like oh, I'm getting um, like I'm having a hard time staying motivated and like all that, so it's like you anybody could give their advice on like things like that. And so be part of the discussion and be active. Like that's one of the coolest things about like I went to an art school, a physical art school, and the community aspect of it was just so important. Like I can't imagine not having that. And so if you're studying online and you're not trying to be active in some kind of community, um, it, it's going to hurt you. Like you, you really need to um, put some effort into interacting with people who are interested in the same things as you. Um, Jared asks, he, he says congratulations for the site, but he also says, uh, I have a question in regards to the road roadmap and user suggestions. Will you be adding a wide uh, in in widely crest requested features as they arise while simultaneously working through the roadmap? Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. If if something comes up and and it takes priority over something that's already in the roadmap, uh, we're gonna update the roadmap. Like it's a, you know, Proco.com is a living thing. It's it's not like it's set in stone. We're gonna be developing it, and so so yeah, absolutely. Please please give us suggestions. Um, your opinions are very valuable to us right now. I think it's Kia or Kai. They ask uh, what will happen to the Facebook anatomy and gesture group, and now now that we have the site. Um, we're gonna try. We're gonna phase them out. Yeah. Um, we're, we're hopefully we're gonna try to get people to transition over. I mean, you could keep posting in there. We're not gonna close them for a while, I don't think. We're not, you know, we're not gonna shut them down, but we're gonna try to get people to transition over. Um, I just feel like it's just a better system. You know, it's like with figure drawing. You, we got the figure drawing uh, page on Facebook, but then. It's just like one stream. You you can't um, you can't like watch a lesson and then put a comment for that lesson right under the lesson. You have to go to Facebook and like just put it into the general uh, community area. Um, so I, I just yeah I just feel like there's no reason to keep supporting both. Uh, Sanja asks. Uh... In the first video, you mentioned study groups. Can you explain how they work? In the first video, I mentioned study groups. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So study groups are right now, yeah, they're they're kind of uh, in the brainstorming phase. But um, essentially, a study group is like, it, they'd be like private groups. So you can have, 
you, you can form a little study group, invite some people from the community that you know, that you interact with, and then, uh, and then you guys can have like a thread where you communicate. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's the, the idea there is that like, it's private. Because I know some people, they like the community area, but they don't want to interact in, in, in like a, an area where thousands of people are seeing it. They want to stay in like a, a tight knit little group that they're comfortable with. Um, is it possible for independent course creators to be uploaded in the future by the community to become official Pro Code 2 .0 teachers? Of course it's possible, yeah. It, yeah, if you're, if you are someone who shows that you're good enough to be an instructor and the community loves you and they want you to make a course, like, of course we're going to work with you, yeah. I don't see why not. Uh, what upcoming courses can we look forward to in the future? Uh, ooh, that's a that's a good one. We got we got a few coming up. Um, so, first of all, Scott Flanders just launched the presale yesterday for a new course. Um, so go to Scott's profile, or just even just go to the courses section. He's probably the first one on there. Um, Yeah, that, that's a concept art course. Uh, Marco Bucci's posting a uh, color course on there, I think, next week. Um, who am I missing? I know, I know Stephen Bauman is working on something. Um, Andrew Keith is doing a sculpting course, and that should be launched in June-ish. Um, Marshall's. Marshall's perspective, yeah, but that's not that's yeah, not yeah. that's not this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, point, right? it's funny. We're, yeah. That's the one we announced like f four years ago, but it, that's not the one coming soon. Um, um, the comic thing. The David, comic thing. David. Oh, David. F oh, yeah, David Finch. <laughs> oh man, this is gonna get people excited. Yeah. We haven't said anything about that. Yeah, David Finch is is gonna have a comic course, and that's already all filmed. We're editing it, and that should be out soon. We're we're doing the pre-sale for that. Uh, during the launch, right? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. We're, this is this is very soon. David Finch's comic course is very soon. Um, geez, I, I know I'm missing stuff. Hold on, let me let me open up the, the doc with all this stuff. Uh, Dorian as well. Oh yeah, Dorian, Dorian Eaton. Um, and you, if you guys have any ideas or anyone that you'd recommend, feel free to comment. Yeah. And... Um. Lane Brown just published his uh, charcoal brush pack for, um, is it, no, it's not for Photoshop. For Procreate. For Procreate, yeah. Um, Marco Bucci, Andrew Keith. Ahmed Alduri is going to upload some of his stuff on there, uh, I think also next week. Steven Zapata, uh, David Doodles, Trent Kanuga, right? Yeah. Kanuga, yeah, he's uploading stuff. Uh, Jama Jarabayev uploading stuff. Jose Vega. Jose Vega. I think Aaron Blaze might upload some stuff. Yeah, th there's going to be a lot, a lot of stuff coming up on there. That um, These aren't like full-on Proca course produced by Proca. A lot of this is content produced by these by the instructors themselves. Not It's not Proco content, but it'll be available to, to buy and interact with in the community as well. Like Rashad as well. Rashad, Rashad. Drawbox. Drawbox is, is going to be working with us. Yeah, cool stuff. Uh, someone is asking if you'd be interested in creating a, a Proco Discord for more direct, <laughs> real time. Why? Oh, like, oh, because of the chat. Yeah. Because chat fun. We're we're just gonna have chat available. <laughs> we're just gonna implement chat. But um, like, yeah, I know we're already working on a chat function for the live stream uh, function, so you you guys could chat during the live streams and then. Uh, you know, direct messages are coming as well. So, yeah. One thing, the reason we didn't um, we didn't implement chat right off the bat is because we didn't know how much engagement there would be. Um, and if like if if we have a a chat that's just like not going, it, 
and, and if there's a chat for every lesson or every course, it's like some are going to be empty, some are not. We, we didn't really know what the dynamic would be in the community, so we wanted to just kind of like launch something a little more, you know, broad, um, and then think about the, the more the chat functions. But I'll be asking Stan mostly questions about the website today. By the way. Yeah, but the but I mean drawing too. Like if, if they have questions about like what I'm drawing right now, that's that's fine. I'm I'm being very structural right now. You can see I'm. I, I think when I uh, when I haven't drawn for a while, I. I fall back on this sort of thing where I'm making sure that like the three-dimensional forms are working um, instead of just like doing sh like shape design. But yeah, we'll, we'll mostly this is like a town hall meeting, um, answering questions. Oh, and also we're gonna be um, announcing the winners of the. Uh, um, the, the weekly critique critique challenge thing. So, because basically every during this launch every Friday, we're gonna give some free stuff, some prizes to one or three people in the community that have been really active in helping others in critiquing. Because we really want to encourage that. I think this is the most important part of of learning. Um, the important part, the most important part of community in learning is that is like the feedback. And the interaction that you get, um, and so to incentivize that, we're we're giving away free stuff. So we'll uh, we'll announce the winners of that pretty soon. Um, yeah, ask me another question. I gotta look up something real quick. Understood. Will there be? Uh, package deals on new courses, will any of them be rolled into existing package deals? Great question on package deals. So we don't have package deals anymore. Instead, what we have is bundle discounts. And so you can create your own packages um, instead of like, you know, having specific groups of, of items already packaged for you. You can, basically the way it works is every course part that you add to the cart, <laughs> Uh, you get an additional 5% off your, your all the courses that you have in there, uh, up to 20% off. So you max out at four parts. So like, if you get the anatomy course, that's three parts. In the anatomy course, uh, you're already getting 15% off the whole anatomy course just by buying all three of them. And then if you add the like the figure drawing course or, or Scott Flanders' pre-sale that he launched just now, you're going to get 20% off all of those things because you got f four course parts in there. Um, and then... Any other course you add fifth, sixth, seventh, whatever, um, it's twenty percent off all of that stuff. So that's kind. Of, it's like the same as a package deal. I mean, most of our package deals were about like twenty percent off. Um, so, but now you could customize it. You could get whatever you want to get. Um, and it only works on courses right now. Uh, we don't. We're not doing it on tools. <laughs> Another question? Or? Um, yeah, go ahead. Um, Aiden asks, what does it feel like for a professional like you to get back into drawing after a long time? <laughs> it feels, so, yeah, and I'm doing it while live streaming, so that's, yeah, go ahead and try that. It, it's it's uh, terrifying. <laughs> You're doing fine. <laughs> it's terrifying. No, but it's still scary, dude. It's like, you know, the, the kangaroo thing is trauma, traumatizing. It really is. <laughs> like, even though I don't I don't really care, but, like, it's still... Like, I don't want that to happen every time I live stream and draw. <laughs> I'm fine, guys. I don't need therapy. <laughs> Not yet. Yeah, that's exactly what you would say. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> will mentorships be offered with Profit 2.0? <laughs> I keep switching back. Um, that's a gr another great question. Mentorship. So, yeah, if you go to proco.com slash roadmap, we have all the, the features that we plan on doing soon. Well, soonish, right? In the next year or two. Um, and the ones I'm most excited about actually are like uh, workshops, which are like live workshops that have a schedule. You know, you sign up and there's a month or two months of, of streaming, critiquing, and it's like a, um, a, 
a limited amount of seats for this workshop because you're interacting with the instructor. That's workshops. You got um, private mentorships, like one-on-one -on -one with instructors. Those um, and uh, paid critiques. So sometimes you don't want to like sign up for a full course, right? You don't want to pay hundred bucks for a course. You just want to pay like I don't know how much it's going to cost, like ten bucks or something for a critique on a drawing. And you want to make sure that you're getting a critique from a professional. You could pay for a single critique instead of signing up for a course. Um, it's not also it's not also always about money. You know, sometimes you don't want to commit to a course. You just want a critique. And so paid critiques are going to be a thing. Um, I think that was it, right? Yeah, yeah live streams. Th those are the three formats that we're working on. Because right now it's all pre-recorded courses with, you know discussions and critiques under the lessons um, great questions you guys Would you expand Proco 2.0 into the CG realm, 3D concept art, and so on? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. We were already doing it. I mean, Scott just launched his pre-sale for a concept art course. That's our first step towards uh, concept art. Um, Lane Brown just launched the brush pack for digital painters. I mean, you know, we wouldn't be kind of doing those little things if we weren't planning on doing that. Um, we are also working on several digital painting courses at the moment, already being filmed. Um, they're done, they're, we're, we're past the planning stage, they're being filmed. Um, we're, we're working with a lot of instructors at the moment. It's uh, exciting stuff. Pretty cool. It is. Um, would you ever consider making a course on the financial aspect of the art industry, such as contracts, interacting with clients? Um, yeah, I think, I think that's needed. I think that's a really important part of it. I, I don't think I would make that, like, I wouldn't be the teacher for it. Um, because I don't think I have that much experience working as a professional artist, right? Like, there's a very big difference between working as a professional artist and just, like, building a, like, a company, which is what I'm more experienced in, um. But like someone like Marshall, I think would do a great job in teaching a, a course on, oops, on that. I don't know if he has any interest, but definitely we'll we'll find an instructor to do something like that. Um, uh, can you follow a course without any good quality materials like pencils or paper? <laughs> well. Why would you want to follow a course without good quality material? I mean, at least have decent quality. I assume the price. De decent. Right? But this this is it. It's newsprint, which is like the cheapest possible paper you can get. Um, and these pencils, which like, how much are they now? I know they were two fifty when I when they're, I. They're, they're like three fifty. They're three fifty now. Kind of they're kind of expensive, but they last you a while. It's it's. I mean, I don't know. It, it's not that expensive. Like, how much cheaper are you gonna go? Um, is it really worth that that savings? Um, I mean, you could you could also just do graphite. That's fine. It's it'll be a little bit slower, but um, graphite's a great medium. And graphite is cheaper, I think. Is there a plan to make courses in different languages in the future? Um, yeah, as they come. Um, we're not actively uh, like trying to expand to any specific territories or anything right now. Um, I know we are working on a course with um, two people from or two different courses f uh, from people from the the Russian Academy, um, and so they're they're. 
going to record in Russian, um, so there will be a Russian version available. Um, I know we do have um, Spanish subtitles in, in several of my courses. Uh, we didn't dub over m me talking, but at least there's subtitles. Yeah, let us know which, like, which specific languages you guys are talking about. And if, yeah, if there's a huge demand for it, then I guess we'll put some effort into it. But most of the time, we, we provide um, uh, transcripts, English transcripts, and then you could like translate that in any language you want. Just shoot it through Google Translate. When uh, Marshall's Perspective course comes out, will those be uploaded to YouTube as well as freemium content? Yes, yeah, yeah. Marshall's Perspective course is going to be created very much like my figure and anatomy courses, where there's a lot of free content um, and then also just a lot of premium content as well. I mean, there's, there's just a lot of content. Um, but yeah, we're it, it's going to be the same business model. We're just going to try to release a lot of free stuff, make sure everybody can follow along with it and just make it like a really popular course. Um, which I think honestly is like probably the best business model even in many ways. Like it's the best for people, people who can't afford it because they can still study from you. And it also just makes the course more popular and you have more sales because of it. So it's just, it just works so well for me. It's, it's like, it's the best of every possible situation <laughs> um, so I'll probably never make a course where it's just like all premium stuff well you have multiple courses on the same topics by different artists like one course several instructors no no so multiple courses with the same topics oh yeah I think you mean like competing competing courses yeah. So somebody can make a figure drawing course. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll have people making figure drawing courses on Proco, competing with my courses. That's fine. I don't, I don't really encouraged. care. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Um, it's it, it's not. I mean, my my goal here is not to just like monopolize everybody to just like take my course. If somebody can make a uh, a figure drawing course that complement or like teaches it in their own way like absolutely it's not like i've taught everything about figure drawing that could possibly be taught um everyone's got their own way of of learning and everyone's got their own way of teaching and and different people learn better from different instructors and like that's very encouraged i, I don't i don't mind people competing with me drawing very slow just gonna I'm just gonna go into it all right I'm going into squint mode you guys yes here I'm just not even gonna show my drawing I'm just gonna watch let you guys watch me squint <laughs> I should stop huh okay here you go <laughs> another question yeah I'm just trying to, trying to find a really good one <laughs> you saying there's not a lot of good ones there are tons of good ones it's uh, hard to choose a lot of people are asking about a kangaroo course <sighs> a kangaroo course yeah. and you guys think I should teach that course <laughs> am I really the one <laughs> to teach a kangaroo course I'm the most qualified kangaroo artist Sure. Should I do a, a kangaroo demo during one of my town hall meetings, my town hall streams here? Um, people are asking if this live will be uh, on the channel. Yeah, yes, it is. I'm assuming, right? On the YouTube channel? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's on there right now. <laughs> You're probably watching it now. You mean like a, re a replay? Yeah, yes, yeah. it'll stay up as a replay. Um, yeah, so if you guys... If you, 
Should I say no so they stay and watch now? <laughs> Is that why people ask that? Is this going to be replayed? Do I have to be here right now? Um, oh, man, man the lighting on this thing is not ideal. Should have planned the lighting. It's a nice drawing. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, I just wish I could change some of the light patterns on here. I'll just change it in my drawing. Uh, somebody's asking for a crazy question. Christian's crazy questions? Well, you had one in the, in the I, I page. Go ahead and ask. Okay. Um, I don't know if it's it's not relevant to drawing, but uh, well, someone asked. Okay. Would you rather eat an entire jar of mayonnaise in one sitting, or for two months you have to wear perpetually wet socks? Perpetually wet socks. That damn. That that's horrible. I walk so much. Yeah. I walk like two or three hours a day. I'm not gonna walk in wet socks. I guess a jar of mayonnaise. How big is the jar? Uh, Costco size. Costco <laughs> size. Costco size jar of mayonnaise. Uh, well, okay. What would happen have, do you know anyone has done that no you definitely you definitely get sick well yeah i know i'd get sick but like is it just like you know a day of of you know <laughs> stomach aches probably a few uh, probably a couple days you, you think it's like well, food you, poisoning level uh i don't know you definitely feel bad for like you throw up i know it, i feel bad but but, but, but i'm not gonna like have to go to the hospital it's not like that sort of no no oh well then i'm fine i'll, I'll eat the jar of mayonnaise Is that was that what you thought I would say? Um, I guess so. I mean, people were asking, you know, would your feet get injured wearing socks for that long? No, no, it's just wet socks that you know don't mess up your feet at all. <laughs> wow. Okay. Great question. Wonderful question, Christian. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, somebody asks if you recommend uh, black wing pencils. Oh yeah, I love black wing pencils. <laughs> yeah they're great i have i have boxes of them he does there's like, i do they're all like the, they're, they're, <laughs> there's a lot of boxes yeah. of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i love them i just ordered well oh no they they actually they sent me a bunch of them <laughs> but i did use them a lot before they sent me several boxes of them uh, somebody says that if you were to eat a jar of mayonnaise it'd be about twenty thousand calories 20,000 calories? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. You know what I'd probably do? What? I'd probably work out like crazy that morning. Yeah. Just work out where I'm like so hungry and I need so many calories that I'm like... I think that's the only way to do I it. Can, I can get through half the jar easily and then, <laughs> and then the rest is a challenge. And then, yeah, that'll be the only thing I eat that day. And a lot of water. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steer away from this because the comments are all about mayonnaise now. Ah, jeez. Yeah, um, please. Okay. Uh, will you teach oil painting, Stan? I want to teach oil painting, yeah. It's just, there's, yeah, it's just that there's, there's other priorities for me. Uh, but we got other instructors that are going to be teaching oil painting before I do it. Um, so... Yeah, but yeah, I really do want to teach oil painting because I love oil painting. <sighs> okay, let's start shading. Uh, Ruben asks, uh, what are your thoughts on making community challenges? What do you mean? Like uh, people making their own challenges. Oh, community challenges. Oh, um. Have you? Did you look at what people said? Um, no. Someone asked, actually asked that in the community, um, and I replied and I said like, they are our, our our intention was to just have it initially be just just you know official proco challenges in that community area, um, but if if like a lot of people want to do community challenges, I'm all for it like. It's fine. Um, I mean, if the community wants it, I don't want to stop it. But like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, do, would we be able to allow sponsorships and stuff? Like, people to have sponsor challenges? 
<laughs> I don't know. It's so like it's complicated. Yeah, it gets it gets a little tricky, you know, and that kind of stuff. Uh, Felix asks, can we perhaps get a sketchbook category in the community? A sketchbook category. Is that like where just people post their sketches? I guess so, yeah. yeah. Um, huh. Why can't you... Hmm. Sketches of what? I guess it's... It, does like, it not fit in any of the other categories? Well, or it's just like too... It's, it's too loose? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's sketchbook, right? It's not like it's fundamentals or... Free, it's not under a brand of art. It's... it's it's not fundamentals, it's just like yeah. daily practice sort of thing. I guess so. Sure, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> Woo! Nice. He yeah. did it. <laughs> yeah. Good job, Felix. Is that Felix Gaffert? No. I don't, oh. I don't know how to say his name. But. What? Where is it? Felix. Oisengoss? in House? Oisen House? I don't know. That sounds right. Sounds sounds like it would be a real name. Uh, what are you most excited about with Proca 2.0 and uh, moving forward? Um. Hmm. I'm most excited about just growing the library, just having other instructors on there, just like like a really active community of, of instructors and students just being there on, in, on Proco. I think that's just like, to me, that's super exciting to, to be, because I mean, that's why I would even spend that much money and, and time on developing a platform like that is like, I wouldn't do that if I was the only one teaching on there, right? Like the whole point is to um, enable others to be able to to make a living off of teaching, and for people to become professionals through the stuff that they they do on that website. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm most excited about. Just, yeah. This is kind of a long question, but um, okay. Uh, my question is on the business side of things, and I hope it doesn't seem rude to ask, but I'm curious how you will incentivize other instructors to join the site. Do you offer them more traffic than they can get on their own? Do you pay them? Do you take a small cut of their earnings? I'm curious because many of them, uh, such as Mark Bucci, has courses for sale on his site, on his own website. Yeah. Um, the way we encourage them is that, you know, we give them fair deals, and um, it's just a, it's another way to distribute their stuff and get money from it. I mean, like, like personally, I, I have my stuff in other platforms. It's not just on Proco.com, right? Like, um, not all my stuff, but like I, I, I put some things here and there, like QBrush. I got some stuff on QBrush, um, on S, uh, SVS Learn. I got some stuff. Um, Steam. Steam. Right? Yeah, but nobody actually like did anything there. <laughs> I don't know. It was, yeah, I don't know if people actually were buying courses on there but yeah we did we experimented with steam so it's like I, I don't understand why it would even be an issue and i think most most instructors that we we approach they understand that too it's like yeah i sell on my own website but i can also sell here <laughs> and so what um you know, like you, it's uh i don't know i, I don't see the issue we, we definitely want to give them good deals like um, and support them. Um, Scott asks, can you ask more or can you talk more about the gamification mentioned in the roadmap? Um, hmm. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, so none of, none of that is like set in stone we don't have a an exact thing but right now already everything you do on there is like is is tracked by um and, and it's like s saved in your account right like you can track your own courses you can see how much progress you did like you watch a video we mark it as completed um 
you leave a comment, well, we know you left a comment, right? So all this stuff is, is there and we can um, give you rewards for being active on the site. Um, and and those rewards could be real rewards, not like just a badge, but like actual stuff you can use to get better at drawing. So if you want to, um, I mean, maybe we'll give rewards like uh, free model packs or a discount off of a product or something, or free critiques. Um, then we could we could do that kind of thing through through rewarding people of being you know helpful for other people, to, helpful to other people. Um, So it's that sort of thing, you know. We're we're you're, we're we're incentivizing activ specific activities that we want to uh, to you know incentivize, encourage to do more of. And those the things we want to incentivize are the things that are going to make you learn more. Um, essentially, making it more fun for you to learn uh, to go through the process of becoming a better artist. Sajin asks, do you think a bachelor in arts is necessary to get a job in the art industry? Of course not. <laughs> you know that answer. Is there anyone working in the art industry who doesn't have a bachelor of arts? That's the right question. <laughs> hey, hey, well, yeah, kind of. But, I mean, Marshall doesn't, and he, he teaches. Somehow he even got a teaching job at, at, at several colleges. So is it necessary? No, of course not. You, you, if you're good enough, you'll get a job. Um, also, um, you can also learn everything that you want online, too. So everything that yeah. they teach you in classes can also be learned on YouTube and stuff. Yeah, all the information can be learned online. But. Mm, I'm not too big on this skull. Okay, I'll move on to quick sketches next. You know, like people were saying Yoni, some were saying Mallory, other were, uh, they were saying uh, Veronica. Um, okay. Well, okay, so how about you uh, comment again, which uh, model pack do you think Stan should draw from? Again, I, okay. Yeah. Um, how do you get your proportions right all the time? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Who gets their proportions right all the time? I don't, for sure. But I mean, you could, you could, uh, you can get them close by measuring more the process of measuring does two things it teaches you proportion <laughs> right because you're analyzing so just the process of analyzing is going to make you better at analyzing and judging proportion and two it makes your drawing that you're currently working on more accurate because you're measuring you're thinking specifically about proportion um, so there's no like trick here. It's literally you 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 look, you analyze, and you do it, and then you keep doing that, and after a certain amount of time, you will get better and better and better. Um, there are two votes for Yoni. for Sika and one for Mallory. Sika. Sika. Sorry. Sika. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess yeah. Sika. <laughs> Read it. Some 
quick loose shading, nothing crazy. Question about the web dev of Broker 2.0. What tech stack did you use? Is it the same as the previous site? No, no, not even close. The previous site was WordPress. I did it on my own. Did it all by myself. <laughs> no developers. This one had a team of six developers working for four years full time. Um, well, sorry, not all developers. Uh, one of them was a was a d designer, UI UX guy. Um, and one of them was a project manager. So I guess four developers. Sometimes there were more on the team when we really wanted some, some more crunch time. Uh, but, but no, this one is uh, Ruby on Rails. If you were to try and learn to do art with the intent of gaining a career in it at this point in your life, how would you do it? The question is obviously assumes you can't draw you can't draw. Well, if you, what, so what do you mean? The question is, what would you do uh, if you were your age, but you couldn't draw and you're wanting to pursue a career in art? Oh, if I needed to learn how to draw? If, I, if I, I'm starting over right now. Yeah, yeah, at your age right now. At your age, at my age. So, well, assuming I'm, I have a job, right, somewhere else doing not art, and so I, I don't have enough time to do, like, full time. That's probably, like, the big part of the question there. Um... I mean, if, if I was serious, like this is what I want to switch my, careers, my career to, from the current one to a, uh, a career in, in art, I would dedicate time every, you know, every week to getting better. That's the, the biggest thing. If, if you want a new career, the first thing you got to do is you got to get the skills to be able to participate in that industry. If you don't have it, it's just not possible. So I would probably spend a few years just trying to get my skills up. Um, ah, I don't like this. People are asking what you're drawing from. I'm drawing from a skull. It's right here. Um, the Proko skull. There's a, sc there's a Proko skull right here. It's a, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm done. I, could, I don't want to get into details in the shadows because as soon as I start, as soon as I start putting values in the shadows, I have to start putting it in other areas, otherwise it just doesn't work anymore. <laughs> and I, I, I'm not, I don't want to spend the whole stream on this drawing. I'm just going to keep it in this kind of like foggy, loose stage. I think it looks decent. Um, the, here, so I'm going to move my reference now. This is the Proko Skull. Um, you can buy these. <laughs> At uh, proco.com slash goal. What? 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 Is that where what? it is? What? Oh, my God. I'm on it, too. You're on it? Yeah, yeah. What do you mean you're on it? I'm on the site as a model. Oh, that's right. Yeah. If you want to see Christian as a model. Yeah. The thing about these skulls is they have perfect Loomis proportions. Um, and the, well. What? Oh, and the, the yeah, missing teeth. The that, missing teeth are, they just, you know. It's that model specifically. Yes. We, they we, do not come with missing teeth. This is a prototype. Um, and it was uh, one of the issues with our first, uh, like, 100. first hundred that we made uh, was the teeth would just get knocked out <laughs> really yeah, easily. You just flick it. Yeah, you, you just like, boop, you tap the teeth and they just pop out. Uh, but we obviously fixed that. <laughs> so this is one of the old prototypes that we had. Um, They're also magnetic too. Yeah, you know, boop, magnetic, and then it goes. Oh, oh, this is one where the magnets were still like that. Okay, yeah. So I don't, don't. Yeah, this is a really old one. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's also a tripod mount. And there's a, yeah, a little tripod hole there. You could put it on a mini tripod and position the tripod from any angle. Do a little Loomis head studies from this. What is that? Oh, my alarm. Time to do what? Make a Proko TV post? Where? On Instagram? On Instagram. Oh, 1 o'clock, huh? 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock, guys. Are you going to post? Uh, I can wait a little while. Okay. All right. Um, oops. That's not. <laughs> that's 
my screen. Um, somebody asks, uh, are the next Proco challenges going to be held on Proco.com or the usual Instagram post? Uh, on Proco.com. We're going to announce it on Instagram as well. Um, but the, the, all the, like, submissions is going to be on Proco.com. Just because it's, you know, I, I think I, I already answered it earlier on in the stream. But essentially, it's going to be a lot easier for you guys to interact and, you know, like, have everything all in one place. Um, so, and also there will be a community vote. So if you, the submissions were all, they're all going to go on one page. Everybody submits their finals, and then people can go up there upvote, and then there will be a prize for the community winner as well. Um, yep. Okay. So last look here. Ta-da! Finished um, sketch. So which one should I do? Um, uh, I. I, my personal choice is Yoni. Um, <laughs> of I, course. I, I like, you know. I, yeah. Um, but, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll Wh why Yoni? Is it because he's got great poses and uh, the great anatomy? Yeah. Exactly. Like you can see the anatomy and stuff? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Okay. Oh. Uh, okay. All right. Carol donates. Oh, I think Carol Prokopenko. Carol Prokopenko? She donated $100. Well, oh, Kirill. Oh. His name is Kirill. Oh. <laughs> Carol. <laughs> Carol. Carol Prokopanko. Carol Prokopanko. <laughs> it's Kirill. I'm sorry. Um, Yoni. Hmm. Not Aaron. Nobody voted for Aaron. Um, He's got like crazy poses, like super fun when you're doing quick sketch. There. All right. Somebody said I would be a great model. Oh, wait. Who would be a great model? Mm. You? Yeah. Well, if you guys want to see Christian half naked, go watch the announcement of the Proco. Uh, yeah. The Proco. It was, it was like two, two or three videos ago on our YouTube channel. It's the which one was it? It's the one. Uh, what is Proco 2.0 or uh, or Proco just changed forever? Yeah. Something like yeah. that. Yeah, that one. Uh, Christian at the at the end of the video, Christian is half naked. So if you want to draw some poses, actually yes, please. In uh, <laughs> everybody go or if you guys want to sketch, go watch. Go pause at the moment where where Christian comes out of the of the room with his towel on, and then sketch that and then post it on Proko.com slash five zero three so everybody could see each other's drawings on there. Jeez. And then Christian oh, no. Christian will critique them all. I, okay, I will. Guaranteed <laughs> critique. Okay, I, I Guaranteed critique from Christian. I will critique <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. This is fun. <laughs> it got oh, fun geez. just all of a sudden. Oh, <laughs> I'm technically the, the most second most popular instructor on the site. You so. oh god. <laughs> that is so true. Yeah. This is a funny story actually. So Christian's not a real instructor. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not well, yeah, yet. not yet. Yeah. Um, he, he's never taught a class or anything, but he's a really good artist. <laughs> <laughs> you actually, I've, I've been looking at the critiques you're giving. They're really good. Oh, thank you. They're actually really good. Yeah, so, yeah. It, it, when, if he gives you a critique, you should listen to him. Um, but uh, he... Because the way that our instructors page right now, there's a little algorithm that like whoever, whichever instructors are the most active, kind of like get bumped up to the top, because we want people to follow instructors that are actually like gonna be posting stuff, right? If you follow someone and they never post, then what's the point? So Christian's been so active on the site that he's the number two instructor <laughs> in, on the list, and he doesn't even have any lessons or courses. The only reason he's an instructor is because he had a he was a guest on the Draftsman podcast. And uh, right now, to make someone a guest of a lesson, they have to be an instructor. So, on the technicality, yeah, technicality made you number two instructor. Congratulations, Christian. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna so, do Yoni, I guess, because nobody voted for Aaron. No, Aaron. Shoot. All right, I am downloading Yoni's model pack. Um, will there be a Proco app? Yes, there will. It's on Proko.com slash roadmap. 
Uh, we're already we've been already working on it for a while, but it's it's essentially like recreating a, a it's it's like starting from scratch. Like it's it's, it's a very long process. Um, but I think I am very confident <laughs> that twenty twenty two it'll be it'll be available. I don't know when exactly. It's hard to say. Ah, how am I supposed to put? Sh oh, I should have done it on this computer so we could actually show. Ah, well, all right, here I'll do it on this computer too. Ask me a question while I do it. Let's see. Why don't I just switch to the screen? And uh, gosh, where is? Ah. Let's. Uh... God, I'm sh all my stuff is visible on here. Let's just go back to this. Um, pro the programming. How do I go full screen on, on a website? Um, I know you can. Yeah. Is it like F1 or something? One of the, maybe one of the F1? Apps. No, it's, it's one of the Fs. <laughs> I'm so scared of pressing all of them because, whoa, that didn't work. <laughs> Ah, that's reload. What is that? Uh, oh, no. <laughs> no, don't do that. It sounds way more dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, do you want to turn on carrot mode? I don't even know what carrot yeah. mode is. Do you see full screen on there? Um, no. No? All right, whatever. I'll just download the model pack. Tools. You know, what was the question? Uh, it's kind of a long one. Uh, it's, okay. Um, how helpful do you think it is to learn to draw from memory? For example, after doing a quick sketch, I tried to do the same thing the next day, but for memory, I feel like I learned way more the second time. Uh, from I mean, extremely important. Like, I think Stephen Bauman was saying in his stream earlier this week that even when you're drawing from observation, you essentially are drawing from memory, right? Like, you have to look at the the photo reference and then remember something about it. Uh, and then as you look down and you draw, you're drawing from the memory. Even though it was only like, you know, five seconds ago that you looked at it, it's still memory. It's very short term memory. But you do forget stuff. You, you, you think you wouldn't, but you do. As soon as you look down, like close your eyes, do you really remember the whole thing? Like. Absolutely not. You, you, you remember very, very little specific details. And the more you can improve your mem like your ability to m remember shapes and values and colors and all that stuff, the, the better you will be even from observation. Uh, so, so yeah, absolutely. And then also that'll m make you better at uh, drawing from imagination because you'll, you'll be able to rely on more of your memory to draw, to like make up stuff. So, well, I think that's what makes you an artist too. You're making decisions on what you think it should look like versus what it does actually look like. Yeah. Um, somebody says F11 is the... Uh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, I already downloaded it. So. <laughs> right here. Too late. Ah. Um, Extract to... Oh, my God. I, the computer's so far. I'm sorry, guys. Any, uh, one more question. Um, is there a way for students to sort courses into beginner, e intermediate, and advanced? Or either, or different subjects. Um, oh, there should have been. I think we had that plan, but we don't have it yet. Because right now, all the courses are there's a tag on them for if they're beginner, intermediate, or advanced. Um, but I don't think you can filter by that yet. <laughs> but there, it, there will be. There will be. It's coming. Somebody's asking about the Proco table. The table? Yeah. Oh, uh, you could see this in, in the in a vlog that I made. 
it's really horrible. You can see I, I tried to fill it with uh, was it epoxy? What was it called? But it, like it like it's really ugly. <laughs> but yeah, I, I made it. <laughs> Just got a piece of wood, cut uh, cut the the logo into it, and then filled it with I think I think it's epoxy, and then I stained it black. But it looks really ugly. I messed it up. I've never done anything like that, so obviously didn't do it right. Um, shoot, as soon as I show one of these, God, why am I even doing this? I can't show anything on uh, this on the stream unless I, uh, Choose a non -nude one. well, I'll have to like censor it. Here, can you set one up for me? <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, just go into Photoshop and yeah. Do you have a preference for any pose? Or? Um, surprise me, give me a good one and then tell me the number so I could get on here as well. Um, can you give me a, a question, I guess? Uh, yeah, okay. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll choose a question. It's in the Slack, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, when will you create a complete course on painting? Most of us are waiting. Uh, complete course on painting. I'm not sure. I mean, we're working on we we have a few courses on painting already, but they're more like they're like demos. They're not full on courses. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I unfortunately I don't have an answer for that. Um, we're not working on one right now, so it's probably not soon. Um, but we'll probably start working on one soon. But you know, it takes time to make one. Hey Stan, what are your thoughts on making the community challenges? I don't know if you. Oh, somebody. Yeah, we already. I already answered that. Why does no one criticize my artwork? Is marked as ask for help. <laughs> um. Let me see. Let me look at your profile. See why. I I have an idea. But I'm gonna search for you. Found you. Ah, I see. So, now this is exactly what I thought it was. So, you're posting your paintings into your profile. So, no, uh, you have zero follow. You have zero followers, and so if you post it into your own profile and nobody's following you, nobody's gonna get that into in their news feed. Um, if you want to kind of start growing a following, and um, or if you just want someone to see it, you could post it into one of the categories in the community, or if it's like a if it's an assignment for a lesson, then you post it into the lesson page. Um, but no one's following you, so no one's going to see that unless they go directly to your profile. That, that is an important thing to, to, to know, I guess. Um, why does no one criticize? Yeah, and then you asked it in the live stream. So, but that, yeah, there, there's your, uh, that's your answer. Is this appropriately blurred, or would you prefer a... Yeah, that's better. Okay, full screen it. And then... So that's what I'm gonna draw. I'm just gonna do a quick sketch. I don't know, five, ten minutes. <laughs> I'm probably gonna end up doing like an hour. Um, what's the number on that? Uh, 223, I think. 223? Yeah. It's just easier for me to see it on this screen. So. All right. So I, uh, unfortunately, I can't have both. On, so you guys could see it as well, but that there it was, Yoni number two two three. If you have the pack, um, okay. somebody's saying I have to get closer to the mic. Not to get closer? No, I have to get closer. Oh, you have to get closer, or you just talk louder. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna start with a little quick sketch. 
So quick sketch, usually you gotta do like, you know, very quick indications. So I'm starting with an oval for the head. Uh, and then the neck, you can see on this side, see how on his left, on that left side, you could see the neck line a lot better. Um, and so I'm, I'm gonna sh use that as like the gestural swoop of the neck. And then that takes me to the pit of the neck right there. And then whenever I, sh I always use the pit of the neck as like a plumb line. And I can see that it's like right there, but I'm gonna exaggerate a little bit more to the right. And then from there, that's a great moment to take an angle of the shoulders. Um, and then neck. He's got developed traps, so that's gonna be like another rhythm. You can ask me questions, by the way. Um, what kind of things should we include in our profile bios? Our degrees or what we focus on in art? Whatever you want. It's your profile. What did you put on Instagram? Just do that. Or what did you put on your art station? Do that. Um, but also remember, we, we are more um, like it, it's more of a, an educational social network type of thing, right? Where um, it's. Uh, we're more educational based, so if if you're if you're a student that's um, gonna be trying to get like critiques all the time, then it's probably beneficial for you to have something in there that uh, that will help the instructors figure out what you're what you you know what you do, um, what like what not just what you do but what you're like trying to learn and like what you're studying. Um, so, this is unrelated to Proko 2.0, but it's, somebody's asking if you speak Russian. I do. Someone asked that last time or on Tuesday as well. Yeah, I speak Russian. Why? Why does it matter? <laughs> I don't know. Somebody commented something in Russian and I can't read it. Let me see. Oh, we support Russian on there. That's cool. I didn't know that. Привет, Stan. Um... It's, uh, it's, I, I actually don't know what the first word is. It's like, but So they're, they're saying, I want to hear your Russian again. So it's probably the same person that <laughs> asked last time. Yeah, that first word messed me up. What is that? Sorry. I like, I, I moved to the United States when I was six. So I never went to school in Russia or, or Ukraine. I'm from Ukraine. Um, and so like, I learned to read just from like my mom telling me what each letter is because um, it's a different alphabet. And so I like sound out the words. I don't know actually how to write, um, but, but I speak. What is your vision for Proco.com? <laughs> is it, I mean, I, um, it's a platform it's for, for instructors to, um, to post their content, to make a living off of it, um, and for students to to be able to become professional artists, like that—that's what we're hoping to get, do: is grow the library enough with enough really good instructors, and have um, all the features that all all the good things that like a, a typical art school has. Um, community feedback; those are the things I think mostly missing right now. Um, on online not missing but harder to get right like it's it's really easy to get that stuff from a school um, um, but online it's it's a lot more challenging
So see how I'm, I'm like, I'm just designing the shapes here, like just to be like nice shapes, very gestural. I'm not worried about the anatomy in a quick sketch. Which of your courses would you recommend for an absolute beginner? Uh, figure drawing. <laughs> cool. Yeah, that does. <laughs> yeah, figure drawing. It. I mean, it's the most beginner. I mean, definitely, if you're an absolute beginner, don't start with anatomy. Like, even though it sounds fun, don't do it. Um, and then the, the portrait course, it, it also has a, a bunch of anatomy in it. it. It's got some beginner stuff in there, but um, it also have, has a bunch of anatomy stuff. And um, most of the fundamental concepts, I actually I explain it in, uh, in the figure course, like gesture structure, all that stuff. Will you do an art history course? No, not me. <laughs> I'm not the person to teach that, but maybe. Um, I actually was like talking to a guy that wanted to teach history and we started planning out a little bit of the course and then it just, it didn't, uh, we didn't follow through with it. Um, so th there needs to be the right teacher. Like I, I really wanna make sure that um, the person teaching that can make learning uh history fun right because I'm, I'm all about making education fun and that's a tough one you know like history teachers in my opinion most of the time are not really good at that as far as you know just from my experience from this you know the history classes i've taken um so if you're a, if you're a history history dude or history girl and you want to teach a history class for artists uh, hit us up what is the difference between gesture and rhythm mm, it's not much of a difference I mean they're, they're used interchangeably um, gesture so gesture is kind of a broader term i think gesture could include rhythm it could also include a little bit of like storytelling or or um it's basically like what is happening here what's the essence of this pose what's the story what is the pose like when i gesture something with my hands i'm communicating something to you right it's like an actual message um Whereas a rhythm, rhythm is just kind of like the way like a line flows or, or like a, a zigzag or whatever. That, that's like a, a rhythm, but it doesn't necessarily communicate a, an, like a, a whole message. Um, so that's, I don't know, that's the way I think of it. I, don't, I, I honestly don't know if that's how every artist thinks of it, but to me, gesture is a more broader term. What do you think, Christian? Um, for me, rhythm is more to find different parts of the body. Well, yeah, like a like the flow between like two things could be a rhythm, right? Like yeah, like this from the shoulder to the wrist. Exactly. I found the rhythm of the arm. Right. Right. You could also say that's the gesture of the arm, right? There's there's a lot of overlap between those, right. but you could also say that this whole thing is the gesture. But I can't say that this whole thing is the rhythm, right? right? Like, this is a gesture drawing, but it's not like a rhythm drawing, because I, I could have, I don't know. Well, for, for me, you can draw the rib cage in there by using one side of the rib cage as a circle to find the other. It's kind of like a rhythm to find that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Steve Houston defined uh, gesture as a movement between forms. Um, Isn't that what rhythm is? Yeah, exactly. Well, it's, it, it, I was going to say that's why it's kind of a confusing question. Ah, right. So, hmm. yeah, that, I think 
that's kind of the problem is that different artists will will just kind of use different words yeah. when they really are communicating similar things um so it's it's tough man like you you have to listen to a teacher and figure out what they mean by that word like if i tell you my definition of it right now that doesn't mean that's what every artist you, that talks about it is going to use it in the same way yeah. so you just kind of have to be aware of who you're yeah talking to. yeah at the watts atelier their definition of rhythm is completely different from their definition of gesture they have diagrams dedicated towards the rhythm of the body and yeah. Um, okay. Well, that, that was a really horrible quick sketch. Honestly, like that. <laughs> I am. Like I am not very happy with my drawings today. Nice drawing. Um, I mean, it's expected. I I'm not surprised that my stuff isn't coming out amazing. You know, if you, if you haven't picked up the pencil in a while. But this is good. It's good for you guys to see it. Um, how can I grow a beard like you? <laughs> you can't. <laughs> I'm, that's not me asking. That's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta man up a little bit. Yeah. I'm also. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, you gotta shave shave a little bit off of these little parts, right? You gotta put in some bald spots, uh, and then uh, make sure that these don't connect. Um, and then you'll have a beard like me. Uh, would you like to see the first? Uh... Ah, <laughs> that's wonderful. Yeah, uh, this is the the towel picture. They can't. Okay. okay here's the. I'll... Uh, oh, here I'll I'll do it like. The... Oh, that's the other one. Which one? This one. Ah, here, how do we lower the contrast? There, that's the first towel picture submitted by who what's the name uh let's see uh george jacobson okay thank you george <laughs> wonderful um all right christian i'm gonna um i'm gonna start drawing yoni number 200 can you pull it up on the computer so we could show them that one as well Starting with the head, it's kind of a profile view and we can see the bottom of the jaw. And so it's kind of a guitar pick shape and if I could see the bottom of the jaw, I'm going to do a little something like that. See how immediately just a little triangle at the bottom looks like we're, we're looking up at him. And then the neck would be in here like that. However, his arm actually there's pecs coming through here, his arm through there. Hurry up, Christian, I'm almost done. <laughs> Just kidding, I'm not almost done. So here's the pose. Uh, oh, there. That's the one I'm drawing. He's leaning over. You can see a little bit of the bottom of the jaw. So you, you see, I, I started with the head. That's very important because now I, from the head, I can do the neck, the shoulders, the torso. Everything kind of comes off of that in that area, and I could start that flow. Uh, what is the downvote feature for? Downvote feature? Um, it's part of the algorithm for the news feed. In the classroom, you guys have a news feed where you, you get all of the activity of the things you signed up for. Like, if you add a course to your classroom, if you follow people, if you, if you follow a category in the community, all like things from those areas will will populate in your news feed, but they're not they're not in chronological order. They're in order of um, an algorithm, basically, of to, to show you like the best stuff. Um, and the downvote feature is 
part of that algorithm. It's not too strong. Like, it'll only really hurt you if like a lot of people start downvoting. Then it'll like it'll push that down. And that mostly it's there because like if somebody posts something just really bad, and a lot of people are downvoting it, we don't want that stuff to show up high on someone's newsfeed, so it'll it'll drop down. But like I don't think we even show how many downvotes something has. No. So it's really it's um, it does have a purpose. Like it it's it's to rate posts, but we don't want people to see how many downvotes they have. Like I don't think it's that important. Most posts aren't gonna have many downvotes. Like I don't it's for the really offensive ones. Yeah, it's really for just the bad stuff. But and also for the really bad stuff you can flag. Like if you click on the two two dots on the cor in the corner, top right corner, you can flag something. And that's even more like stuff that should be taken down. Uh, you flag it and then our moderators will see it. Uh, or our admins will see it and uh, can actually take it down. But if something is just bad, like just like a horrible critique, someone's being mean, um, and it's like not bad enough to be taken down, but you know you want to just like downvote it, then that's fine too. But it's like some people, like if they see some, them, like somebody, one person downvotes their thing, they're gonna get really like sad about it. So we don't want to show it, but use it to. Uh, you know, determine where things go. I don't know. What do you guys think of that? Is that am I, are we missing something? Is that bad the way we're doing it? Um, will we be able to purchase individual premium lessons for my specific course? No, no, we don't have individual lessons for sale. Um, it's yeah, you, just, you kind of have to get a course. What time is it? We started at 12. It's been an hour and a half. Yeah. Okay. So flow of the leg. Here, I'll show you guys again. There it is. Flow of the leg, really important. I'm, I'm following the quads, then the shin, into the foot. Um, this is not related to Perfect 2.0, but how do we see and use planes in bu building out the shape and form of the body? How do we what? How do we see and use planes when building out the shape and form of the body? How do we see planes? Yeah, so Sorry. yeah uh, how do we see planes? You know? um, well, in order to see them, you have to understand them first, kind of. Um, I I if you're talking about the body... So I mean, the the light will reveal it as well. Um, let me see. Like, okay, so my face. You got a a, a highlight right here, or a, the forehead is even better. So you got a highlight right there. That means that kind of indicates a corner, right? Highlights usually fall on corners. Um, and so, well, there's a plane, and there's a plane, and then you kind of see on this side. There's another little highlight there, and like a darker half tone. And that shows me that there's another big plane of change, a plane change there. You got planes, plane. Um, on my nose, you have a, a highlight right there on this corner. And then you got a shadow starting on this corner. And then that whole thing is a plane. And then you kind of see it stop right there and it becomes light again. So you, the light will reveal the planes. Um, but also, if you understand what the structure of the faces you you know exactly where they should be as well and so sometimes if it's not obvious you'll still know there's a plane there so i guess just studying anatomy studying the thing the thing that you're you're drawing understanding its structure will help for sure um sean asks is there a way to sean what sean not our sean not our sean sean copes i don't know how to say the last name okay um is there a way to be part of the proco team uh or a or as a moderator for the page? Yeah, yeah, reach out to us. Support at proco.com. Um, 
Will there be a feature to bid slash purchase instructor demo drawings? Ooh, <laughs> oh, I haven't heard of that one before. That's a good question. Interesting. Oh, shoot. I'm, I'm, I kept it on my face. I was drawing. Sorry, guys. I drew that. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I swear. Right, you did. Sure. Yeah, it was me. I, I, got, I had Jeff come in here yeah, and yeah. fix it. <laughs> That's funny. Um, in, bidding on instruct that that's like an interesting thing like uh, it would allow instructors to make like a little more mo money from like their live stream or something that's that's interesting I don't know I haven't thought about that um, NFTs. <laughs> someone had this on FTs <laughs> um, it's, it's not impossible I wouldn't say that that's never gonna happen, but I don't know. We're not working on it. <laughs> it's a cool feature, though. That, that's interesting. It's certainly something that happened in 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 school, in physical school, when I was studying at Watts. Like students would buy demo drawings from instructors all the time. I own like five. You own five? I think so. Yeah, it's very common for students to buy it. It's like it's like you were there for the experience. Yeah, for, or for the actual drawing. So you feel like it's part of your life story or something. So you're well, like, yeah, yeah. you're more likely to buy a drawing that you witnessed um, just for like the memory of it. Um, I really like the rib cage here. Like it kind of, you can kind of see it popping out a little bit there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna indicate a little bit. Any other questions? Um, <laughs> Bill has donated ten dollars and he says Wow. I work as a two D animator and after work I feel tired and stressed uh, to draw. On weekends I'm usually relaxing and recovering from the weekend. How can I squeeze in time to draw and improve without stress? Uh, without stress? Well, what I mean, what's stressful about drawing for you? If it, I mean, if um, if you find like exercise is stressful, then just uh, maybe focus more on like personal projects, so that you're enjoying the process of drawing. Um, if you ever feel like you're not enjoying drawing, um, for like a an extended period of time, I, you got to evaluate. You got to make sure that you, you you don't burn out, right? Because that, that's very common for for that to happen. And, um, but so he said he he can only draw on like weekends or something, um, nights and weekends. And that's that's kind of what I did when I was I started studying at Watts Atelier when I was in high school, and school is like a full time job, right? Like high school, um, I mean, and I was I was taking a lot of like honors and AP classes because I thought that's what you should do, um, and so I had a lot of homework. I had to study for a lot of really difficult tests, and so when I was studying at Watts, I only had nights and weekends, um, so. You kind of have to figure out like wh when is the only time I can do this. If th these are the moments in my day that I could do this, make sure that those are those are precious precious moments that you can take advantage of. Um, and, you know, and, and it's a lot easier to actually do that if you're excited about sitting down and drawing. Um, if you're not and you you have to force yourself every time, it's going to just be so difficult for you. Um, you you got to figure out how to make it exciting, where you can't wait to get home, you know, get that other stuff out of the way, so that you can start drawing. I'm just like focusing on this body. <laughs> it's a nice drawing. Yeah. All right. The hips aren't working. There's like no structure in here. Feel like 
it needs a plane it, it needs it needs a clear plane change right here um, somebody's after this drawing somebody's asking for a relatively symmetrical yoni drawing um, okay Hmm. Why? I guess like uh, they have trouble drawing male shoulders. Male shoulders. Wait. So why does it have to be symmetrical for male shoulders? Mm -hmm. When they're standing relatively straight. Uh, not a quick gesture where you draw a straight line, but let's say you have ten minutes and want to add more details up to the upper shoulder arm area. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Um. Sure. Do I necessarily have to draw big? No. <laughs> what is that? I, I, I'm always confused by those kinds of questions. Like, have to have to do what? For what reason? For like, do you have to use a pencil? No. Do you have to use paper? No. Like, what are you trying to do? If you want to be a mural artist, you should probably draw big. You know, if, if you're. Um. If you're a concept artist, no, you could you could focus on small sketches, um, but vary it up, I guess, so you're not just like getting into too many patterns of how your proportions are. Like you can judge relative proportions versus just like the head on your page is always the same size, um, and you're just used to proportions being that exact size. Um, where you could you could change the ratio, you know, all the the sizes of your drawings, but it doesn't even have to be that crazy. Like you can draw something this big, and then you can draw a full page, and that's not huge. Anyway, um, let's get another drawing. I guess shoulders. Go ahead, get, ask me another question while I look for. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, will Will there be more uh, live streams with you, Broco? Yeah, I'm gonna actually during this uh, this launch the next. Next Friday and the Friday after, I'm definitely going to do li no, live streams again. Um, and uh, yeah, proco.com slash party if you want to keep up with the schedule. We're doing something every day for uh, all the way through the end of June. Um, and yeah, this Friday, next Friday, the Friday after that, I'm, I'm live streaming. So... Um. And maybe I will live stream a portrait of a kangaroo. Maybe. I don't know. It might happen. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, who, knows? Who, knows? who knows? You might auction it. Who knows? I might auction No, wait. <laughs> that's, not, that's actually not a thing. I'm not going to auction it. <laughs> Damn it, Christian. I'm trying to find a Yoni picture where he's just, it's just his shoulders. Um, maybe Anthony? Oh, yeah, I guess, but then we have to download it. Yeah. Is this? I don't know. I guess so. It's kind of, I don't know, like it. Symmetrical. There you go. There. Okay. Which we'll one? We'll do that. That's number 144. Okay. I'll just, I'll just do the upper body on that one. Um, okay. Um, Christian will pull up number 144 soon. Until then, uh... I have a question for you. That's the pose. <laughs> He'll, oh, wait, there's no... Okay, it's, it's blurred out enough, I guess. Okay, yeah, don't, don't, uh, yeah. <laughs> don't pause. <laughs> don't pause that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't flag this video, please. Um, <laughs> I'll quickly change the subject. I will uh, ban you from my channel. <laughs> Can uh, we do that? Yeah. Can't, no, but do we um, know who reported it? Well, you have your, you have your own platform <laughs> no. now, so you can... Uh, yeah, but we don't know who reported it. Yeah. Don't do it! Please. It's just a naked dude. Come on. Yeah. All right. Um, and you can barely even... You know. Yeah, you can barely <laughs> see it. Uh, it's mostly a sword. What was the number again? Uh, 144. Um, what's the easiest pitfall to fall into once you're past the beginning phase of drawing? Past the beginning phase of a drawing, or you're like past the fundamentals and you're studying? What, what do you think? I get. I, I would be curious about both. 
<laughs> Those are completely, completely different yeah, questions. It's a two-part question. All right, which one should we start with then? Uh, probably the beginning phase of an actual drawing. Once you're done with the beginning, uh, once you're done the beginning beginning phase of a drawing, which is like gesture, proportion, um, you kind of get things laid out. Um, I usually, before I really start getting into like details, and before I like say, okay, I'm committed to this placement, I'm committed to these to this proportion, I usually go in and I kind of like try to design my shapes a little bit better and make sure that just like the overall concept is working. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying the drawing even at that phase. You can, you can just crop it at his arm, at his okay. hands there. I'm not gonna go beyond. Oh, no, keep his head. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna. Sure. Um, yeah, so, so just before I move on, I, I want to, um, just make sure, I, I like the this shape design. Um, and then I go for structure. I try to figure out, make sure the structure is working. Um, and then I start mapping in my shadows. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if I'm answering the question right. I'm like going through my process of, uh, of a drawing. Well, I, I mean, I guess that's the question is to keep it as linear as possible, right? It's like, uh, the, yeah. the pitfalls are to fall off the, you know, the path of doing a good drawing. Oh, wait, the question was, what are the biggest pitfalls? Yeah. Oh, shoot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> did not answer. Uh, the biggest pitfalls after you're done, well, the biggest one is not catching your mistakes in that early phase of the drawing um, and moving on too soon. And, and, you know, you got some proportional issue and then you're, you're shading and you realize you got proportional issues. Well, it's really tough to fix that, especially if it's a major mistake. Um, if it's if it's a stiff drawing, if you didn't really make sure that the gesture is working, it's hard to make it more dynamic once you start adding in details. So you just gotta like erase and move things around a little more. Um, yeah, I guess it's it's the biggest pitfall is that initial stage not being right. Um, the biggest pitfalls for if you're past learning fundamentals, just to keep studying fundamentals. Like yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I agree you with just you. Keep studying fundamentals. You just keep you, you stay in student mode and you just do homework all the time, and you never transition to artist mode where you're actually trying to be creative now and working on your own projects. You just keep studying gesture and structure and anatomy and all that stuff. And it's like the point of that stuff is to make it, um, you know, internalize it so that you can now create. You can do something with it, not to just get really good academic drawings out there. Um, unless you want to teach. <laughs> it work, it's worked for me. Because <laughs> yeah. then you're just going to be teaching mostly fundamentals. But anyway, okay, so uh, I'm going to start with... All right, let's... Oh. Okay. You, <laughs> you just want to look at my head while I draw? So there's the, uh, there's the pose we chose. <laughs> let's, uh, let's zoom in on that bad boy. Ah. Beep, 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 beep. No. Dead, dead. Boop, boop. Wait, why can't I rotate it? <laughs> why? Won't ro let me rotate. Oh, there you go. Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm mostly doing that. There you go. Cool. Uh, I'm going to. All right. So, he's got a. His head looks so long. It does look very long. Because he's got like tall hair. He's actually he does actually have a long head as well, but he also has like a beard, beard only at the bottom, and long hair, and so like. It just makes his head look so long. But I'm gonna. Get his head in there without his beard first just to make sure I got like a normal sized face and then add the hair let me know when you want another question yeah um, what level is of artist is Proko 2.04 
Um, I mean, a lot of the stuff on there right now. Well, no, I was gonna say beginner, but no, it's not just beginner. The anatomy course is is a pretty advanced course. Um, definitely not for beginners. It's like intermediate advanced for for the anatomy course, but figure drawing is is beginners. Uh, the portrait course is kind of beginner intermediate. Uh, and then some of the stuff coming out right now, like Scott's um, Scott's concept art course, I would say that's intermediate advanced as well. Well, and he might make the, make the argument that it's way more beginner, actually. He, well, well but, it, it, but he's it, not it, teaching it, drawing concepts. No, no. He's, exp he's, tell he's showing you how to, like, use shape, right? use shape to design your characters, right? So we're, we're going beyond, like, learning structure and gesture and, and shading and stuff. And now we're like using that to create something real, designing characters. I would say that's not beginner, but it is like a beginner concept art course. But the yeah. idea of concept art in itself is not a beginner thing. Like you, you need drawing experience to even just like start concepting a little. Yeah, he'd probably argue with me on that, huh? Well, he, he would say he would say that's more fundamental because that, it, it's your taste. It's what you want to draw, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like shape is so much. Yeah. Like, and I told, I see him. He's teaching his like four or five year old son concept design right yeah, now right, right so he and he's not teaching him how to like, yeah, like do any of that beginners can't stuff. learn how to draw right well uh, yeah not really but they could learn to explore the creativity yeah ah god that's well, great um i, I guess I, think, I take that back well i think the answer is it's everyone the it is everybody the concept art class is beginner intermediate advanced the, well, um, the goal of proco in general is to get as many people as, right you know everything is going to be useful for everyone Right, we, we don't want to just be a, a thing where people are just learning fundamentals. I mean, the goal is, on the platform, is to be able to get someone from the beginner stages all the way to becoming a professional. Yeah. Um, that's what we want it to become with the, the range of instructors we have and the range of topics we have. Right. Um, all right, so you said it's not a gesture. I want to actually, like, uh, oh, I have to add his beard. I'm gonna exaggerate his facial hair a little bit. <laughs> yeah, like it. Um, um, I have a question on how to take measurements from photo reference on a phone drawing. Okay. Um, I guess that's that's it. What? How to take uh, how to take measurements from a photo from a phone essentially, and I, I guess it's the oh. same thing as how to take measurements. You're gonna use. Either like a, a toothpick to like tick, 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 like little take little measurements with your finger instead of a pen. I mean, you could use a pencil, but it's yeah, you, a pencil um, or just just use your eye. Take measurements with your eyes uh, and start learning how to do that because that's also important. You, you can't always just be measuring with like a pencil out like that. Um, if you're doing like a three-hour drawing, don't do it from a phone. Um, <laughs> yeah, just just get put it on a bigger screen somehow. Uh, somebody else uploaded a uh, pretty pretty good drawing of me. Yeah, you want to see it? Hold on. Okay, so I'm um, just getting an indication. Sometimes an indi a good indication of a. Uh, of a face in there kind of helps too. Uh, as as reference for the rest when I'm drawing it. Sometimes just like a big shape with like like a, a circle with like some angles is not enough to feel the propor if the proportions are correct. Sometimes I don't know. Okay, go ahead. Let me see the. Uh... Okay, hang on a sec. Ooh. Look at that. It looks good. Brushing his teeth. Very nice. Yep. <laughs> That's Christian. Nice. Good job. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, good job, awesome. All right, so showing you guys this again. So the shoulders are pretty much straight, right? Like from the pit of the neck, horizontal. Um, there isn't even like a, a V shape for the, the clavicles there. Um, it's just like a straight line. Beep. 
I want to paint portraits in pastel. Is drawing in charcoal a good start for me? Paint, yes, absolutely. If you're, charcoal is a great um, medium for painters to learn to draw versus like graphite. Uh, I mean, although both are fine, you know, but like charcoal, you can use the side of it to, to start doing tone, right? It's just like pastel. You, you could you could sharpen it like a like I do, um, and you can start getting that used to that sort of uh, line quality, and learn all the stuff except color using charcoal, and then expand the color. All right, so I got kind of have like a general rhythm in here for the sh for the traps I feel like they're not big enough though or they're just too low Is that another question? Um, yes. I have tried the figure drawing course weeks ago, but I realized that my line quality is so bad. Any suggestions uh, which exercises to improve line quality? Sorry, ask that again. <laughs> um, I have tried the figure drawing course weeks ago, but cool. I realized that my line quality is so bad. Any suggestions on which uh, drawing exercises to improve line quality? Uh, yeah, the gesture exercise in my in the figure drawing course. Um, just while you're doing it, try to have good line quality. Um, it, it, like the way to get good line quality is to think about your line quality and intentionally try to draw good lines. Um, it's going to be painful. <laughs> well, also you just get better it's, at lines by just drawing, right? Kind of, unless you're always drawing bad lines. Then you're just going to reinforce bad lines. Yeah, that's true. But eventually you get so good at practicing it that you're practicing while you're enjoying drawing. You know, Kind of, yeah. Um, but do, do warm-ups at first. Don't start with the drawing right off the bat. You know, start, start like <laughs> Cynics in his stream was talking about doing spirals. You know, start with some spirals. Uh, I, I like to start with some circles, some ovals. You just kind of like straight lines. Yeah, straight lines, and all that does is just like loosen up my arm. Um, straight lines. Whatever. Just I'm just loosening up my arm. It doesn't. None of this has to look good. But after months of doing this, your lines will get better. You're Right now, okay, the problem right now is you can't control your arm, <laughs> which makes sense. Like, if you're learning to golf, you can't control your, your body to, like, hit it correctly. Every little, jo every little movement in, in, the, in your joints is going to affect how you hit that ball. And you have to, when you start learning how to do that, you have to think about each part separately. And you, you, first you, you, you practice this, the motion of your torso. Then you try to like focus on the way your arms are moving and like the angle of your hands. And like, what's my head doing? And, then, and, and as, you, as you like start getting better at all those individual pieces, you slowly start to combine them and get more complex. And then you just start forgetting about all that stuff. And your lines are good and they're going in the right place. And you're just comfortable and you're fluid and your hand is relaxed. You're not gripping the pencil like that. Um, so, yeah, in, initially, you have to just go through the pain of thinking about drawing good lines, which is super distracting, right? But uh, that you're just going to have to do that. Um, all right, so right here, there's a rhythm between the deltoids and the pecs, kind of like this. And then it could you can, like bring it back into the pecs do you plan on adding figure pose packs with models with different body shapes 
For example, all male models are great, but they are all muscular. Was wondering if more. Aaron's scrawny. not mu super muscular. He's just really flexible, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But I guess super scrawny or overweight. Um. Yeah, probably. Um. We we actually also just I'm I'm reaching out to other people creators that have photographs of models to put it on the platform as well. Um, so you guys have, you know, it's easier to find all that stuff because th there's a lot of good post packs all over the place online as well. It's not just us that sell that stuff, um, but it does help when they're like easy to find. Um, so yeah. We want to add more post packs. So the, you see that rhythm right there? It's the separation from the deltoid to the packs. And then you got the sides of the packs, which lead into the arm. And then you have a rhythm of the bottom of the packs my God, more drawings of you? Let me let me show that one. Uh, it's two. There. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's a good one. There's some They're all pec good. rhythms. They're all really good. <laughs> but yeah, the funnier ones are gonna be <laughs> the best, of course. Come on, guys, make him look bad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. Come on, yeah. add some humor into it. All right, and then um, deltoids, kind of like a rhythm like this. Directly copying another artist's drawing fit into one's learning process. Wait, well, like master studies? Yeah, I think they're asking about master studies. Um, I think it's incredibly important. Yeah, if it fits in pretty much at any stage where you're trying to learn something, <laughs> like if you're uh, if you're studying gesture, like even at the very beginning, you look at other people's gesture drawings. Right, you 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 study another artist's gesture drawings, and you try to figure out how they're exaggerating and how they're designing the lines, um, how they're simplifying their shapes. Um, like that's that's a master study, even if it's just like studying your instructor's drawings. Like that's still a master study in a way. It's, there's no difference there. I mean, it's not they're not like the same level of mastery maybe as like. You know, if you're studying, I don't know, Rockwell or fashion or something, but uh, sometimes. Yeah. Depends on who your teacher is. Well, and every artist interprets things differently. So the more you right. study different artists, the more you'll find different ways of explaining different parts of the body. Different. Yeah. Um, somebody's asking for an official Christian and Italian ref pack. A what? An official Christian and Italian ref pack. <laughs> um, will, that, will we make that happen, Christian? <laughs> sure. Really? Can God, I, you're I, such I a, a small, small percentage. Of it? Uh, yeah, you could. Cool. You sure. could have all of it. Awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't want the profits from that man. Yes. Nice. Gonna be rich. Uh, I don't know. Do you, do you want to draw? Do you want to do a pre-sale first? And then after... <laughs> get a gate and see how many people actually want Yeah, it. and then after we actually have enough sales, we'll make it. Cool. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, do you want to draw me on stream? No. Okay. I mean, if you in, in, actually... In the, in, the, in the towel pick? If you... Oh, in the towel? Yeah, somebody, somebody took a screenshot. It's a bad. It's 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 not. No, a good it's enough. good enough. It's good enough. 
Um, sure. Okay. Where, where is it in the? Here, I'll put it in Slack. No, no, it's, I have that page open. Is it in the comments? It is. Yeah. All right, I'll open up the. It, it might be. It's it's somebody commented it under. What should I search for on the page? Um, here, let's see. Uh, Aiden. A what? A. A. How do you spell Aiden? A i d e n. Aiden. Three n. There. Got it. All right. Oh. Ah. What is happening? Original, there you go. All right, is that is that good enough for you guys for this one? Don't forget the nipples. <laughs> um. Oh, belly button. Okay. Um, should we announce the winners of the, uh, oh yes, yeah, let's do that. The winners, we have three winners this week. Three. We're going all out. Where do I find them? I, I have them written down. Okay, the first winner is Adam Wiebner. We <laughs> here. I can pull him up on the. No, it's all right. I'll just no. I'll just put him on here. Adam Wiebner's page. There's Adam. <laughs> Yay, Adam! Good job. These are, by the way, guys. These are people that have been critiquing and being very helpful in the community. So we really appreciate you guys. Thank you. Um, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure all the people that have been critiqued are also very appreciative. Adam already has 158 posts. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, man. All right, Adam, congratulations. Um, wait, what are they winning? Uh, skulls, right? Is it Skulls this week? Courses. Skulls? I don't, I don't sure, Skulls. Oh. Skulls. Uh, you can tell us what you want, too. Okay. No, no, oh, it's okay. Skulls this week. Okay, skulls. It'll be something different every week. Okay. Skulls. You get Proko Skulls. If you already have one, then we'll, we can swap it. That's, that's fine. Um, second winner, not, not Yoni, is James Doani. Yay. Yay, James. Yeah, I, I commented on few of his things too oh yeah and he commented on mine nice yeah, he's a good, good guy you guys are interacting in the community yeah yeah we are that's good, good and uh gabriel khan nice i've been seeing gabriel too thank you guys you're all winners and you're all getting a proco skull yay next week same thing so if you want to well next week it won't be a proco skull it'll probably be like a course. free course or something um then Help people in the community. All right. <laughs> Keep going. All right, I'm going to draw Christian in a... Where is it, though? Shoot. Did I lose it? Oh, no. Did you save it? There it is. Okay. Got it. All right, Christian in a towel. You can see this in the comments of proko.com. Yeah, you could also watch the original video. This is <laughs> Oh look, I covered your nipple okay, with the mouse. I'll move that for them. Oh, oh come yeah. on, man. Now it's <laughs> X-rated. Oh, <geez. laughs> that was an accident. Yeah. Um 
All right. I, this is taking a a weird turn. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm just going to, I'm not even going to try to get your proportions right. Okay. I'm yeah, going to do like, to make it wacky. I'm going to make it, so yeah, super wacky. Super wacky. <laughs> okay. This is great. Um, I'm not even sure which direction it's going to go. So this person is asking, I've used mostly the charcoal bar. No idea what the correct English translation is. I've tried the charcoal pencil, but I feel way more comfortable with the bar. My question, why one over the other? Mm. Pencil versus bar? Uh, the bar, are you talking about like the, the cylindrical ones or the square? The, like, I'm correct assuming thing? just either, right? Just yeah. big chunks of charcoal. Um, right? Usually the bar, one, they're, they're a little bit smoother. You can, okay, one reason that I switch to the bar sometimes is that I can sharpen it like really long and then I can use like an inch or two of the side to get like a large amount of uh, of tone on my pad. Whereas like it's hard, if I sharpen this to expose two inches of it, it's gonna break. Um, so yeah, that, that's usually the reason. Sometimes it's just that it's softer, um, but Usually I just want more surface because I don't want wood. I want more charcoal. You have a big Adam's apple? That's big enough to exaggerate. Nice. <laughs> Um, how can I develop a better sense of my skill as an artist? I feel like a beginner no matter how skilled I become, even in advanced topics such as anatomy. Wait, what? They're asking, um, how can I determine my own skill level as an artist? Uh, um, I mean, for what, for what reason? Oh. I guess it's a... Uh, decide what they need to study. Oh, uh, well, yeah. I guess it's confidence. Fundamentally, it's about confidence, well, right? Okay, well that's totally different then. If you just trying to feel good about it, then it's more about just uh, if comparing your yourself to where you were six months ago, a year ago. Um, I wouldn't compare yourself to professionals or someone who you like really admire. Um, I would use them as inspiration and just, like when I look at people who are like dramatically better than me at something, I get inspired. Like I don't get um, like jealous or anything. Like I'm just like, oh my god, I really want to do that, and I like it makes me, it gives me the drive to work on it and and, and get to that level. Um, and so I don't compare myself to them because it's like I know that they worked on different things, they focused on different things, and I have other strengths in my life that they might not have, and that's okay. Like we're all different. Um, and so it's better to compare yourself to yourself before, you know, before you started practicing a specific thing. I may not have room for a towel. <laughs> you mentioned it can be important at every stage, but can it be detrimental to over rely on master studies as a learning method? It might be. I think it, I think it is possible but it's hard to get to that level where like you're actually hurting yourself by do doing master studies like if that's all you do I'm, I'm pretty sure yeah that there there is some disadvantage to that that you're not there's other things that are important that you should do that you're not doing because all you do is master studies um so it's like everything with a balance. I, I'm a really big believer in cross training and doing and doing lots of different things and learning learning something from one thing and applying it to another thing. And so, um, yeah, I, I think does that answer the question? Um, I, th I think so. I mean, you shouldn't over rely on yeah anything. You shouldn't study too much anatomy or perspective or uh, they're, they're all tools to uh, help you learn better. 
Yeah. Um, Proko, I wanted to know if you had any plans for a watercolor course. I believe it is an excellent medium that you should invest more as yeah. compliments painting and oils. Yeah, I, I want to. Um, I personally don't don't do watercolor, not because I, I I don't. It's not like I don't think it's good. I think it's a great medium, um, and like I've seen some amazing watercolors that I'm just like, how do they do that? Because I don't have experience in it. So so I won't. Again, I won't be the teacher for that. But um, certainly we we can find good watercolors. And I have actually been talking to um, one one guy that. I don't want to announce anything yet, but he's got a, a watercolor YouTube channel. You you know him, Tomorrow, I don't know. I think you might have even shown me. Maybe. No. It's fun, Christian. What? Your drawing you is fun. Oh, thanks. I know. <laughs> kind of working on the hand right now. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh God, you're making me. I know. I'm. S <laughs> I'm like exaggerating. That's. I told you I'm gonna make yeah. it wacky. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> oh, like it's not like you at all. It's oh, just yeah. like a fun character based yeah. on yeah, this pal. This like reference yeah. thing. I'm not the most muscular person, but. Yeah, well, you're but you're obviously not this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it'll make me hey. feel insecure. Yeah. More insecure. More insecure. Is there a method or specific trick to have an easier time memorizing shapes for specific things, like bikes or specific pieces of clothing? <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, I'd say draw it. I, you know. Just yeah, like, but. Uh, I guess I the answer here is I'm not the guy to ask that because I don't make that as like a really important part of my studying is to like memorize things so I think I think asking someone like Kim Jong-gi would be more important I think the advice he would give is to just draw a lot yeah he would <laughs> yeah draw a lot well observe a lot too yeah watch the Kim Jong-gi video I made or two there's two of them there's how to become a master like Kim Jong Gi, and then how Kim Jong Gi draws. Maybe that one. Watch this part two of that mini doc uh, documentary I made of him. Yeah. He, he's really the master of that, and I'm not at all. I'm like the opposite, which is why I was so fascinated with him and decided to do a little documentary series on him. Um, so watch that. I think I think you'll actually really get a lot out of that video. It's a free like free video on my YouTube channel. Um, I don't know if this is a question that differ. I, I, so I'll, I'll just ask it. Um, <laughs> okay. Any advice for left-handed people that want to draw? No, absolutely zero advice for you guys. Have no chance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is, is that I hope that was a sarcastic question. Uh, I can't actually use any medium without taping paper under my hand. I, I, is there a difference? There's no difference. Wait, what's the difference between the left hand and a right hand drawing on a surface? I don't know. It's not like writing, where where like we traditionally write left to right, you know, in 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 America and in, in Europe and stuff. But like, where, you know, if you're left-handed, you're like smearing the your ink or your pencil while you're writing, and so it's actually there's an advantage to being right hander in writing but in drawing you're not drawing left to right like a machine you're jumping all over the place and your your hand is going to rest on a place that you already worked on while you're working over here there, there's zero correlation here i don't know yeah i, I, I just don't right. i don't understand yeah. the question honestly yeah um how do you know when it is time to move on from a course I need the definition of move on well, for them okay, so because that's the, mo that's the more important thing to address here right. than the when, right. is that your understanding of what it means to move on from a course. Right. Are, you f are you like thinking you graduated from it and you're never going to have to practice the stuff you learned from that course? Um, or you, 
start taking another course, start focusing your attention on another course. Um, obviously, based on my tone, you probably understand that you should always be studying the fundamental concepts you learned from one course or the, the things that you learned from that course that you, 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 you realize are important to you. Um, like if, you're, if you took my figure drawing course, you're never going to stop practicing gesture and structure. You're always going to do little quick sketch studies. You're going to start with like a, you know, add some mannequinization to your lay-ins when you're working on a big piece. Like you're, you're going to be using all that information all the time and you should be practicing with warm-ups to make sure that you're staying uh, good at that stuff. Like if you want to be a professional artist, you, sh you should always be comfortable with gesture, always comfortable with structure and composition and color, whatever it is that you're trying to like, um, you know, whatever skills are required to do your job well, you got to make sure that you're doing drills and exercises. Pretend you're an athlete. Athletes are not just playing, like a basketball player is not just playing a basketball game all the time, like a full-on game. Most of their time, they're actually doing drills and practicing. Like 90%. 90%. 95%. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, way more than, Probably, you, yeah. I think with artists, maybe it's not that extreme. Where most, you know, like 90% of your, your time is spent on exercises. Actually, that, that's probably bad advice. But a, a, a big chunk of it should be spent on just like keeping your skills up and, and, and improving your, your skills, yeah, I your remember, draftsmanship. I remember while I was at Watts, Eric was telling me that for every hour of class time there is, there should be about like six to 10 hours of personal at home study. Um, so the point of the class is, is to teach you what to practice and to make sure you're practicing correctly and then it's your job to practice on your own. How, how much time? It's uh, six, to, six to eight per hour. So okay. if there's a three hour class then. Yeah. Cool. Um, there's, there's my boy, Christian. Fold, fold design. There you go, Christian. Oh, I need your face in there, huh? Oh, and your other arm. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, well, you wanted that. You wanted your nipples in there too, huh? Mm -hmm. I have a question. Personally. You already asked the question. You wasted your question on, on the mayonnaise <laughs> thing. Well, uh, this one is art related, so. Great. Are, are there any teachers that you want to learn from? That I want to learn from? Yeah. Ooh. Um, yes, and I'm about to like collaborate with that. Uh, one of my favorite all-time artists is, uh, is Morgan Weisling. And I'm actually uh, going to the studio in June and filming him paint. And I would love to, I would love to watch that video. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant painter. He's yeah, absolutely amazing. I I I've told this story several times on like the podcast where I used to just like watch his DVD uh, before going to bed, just like put it on and just like watch it fall asleep. <laughs> um, not because it's boring, but because I just wanted to like absorb the information. And I did a lot of studies, master studies of his stuff. Um, so, yeah, him. Um, I've also studied with a lot of the ones that I want to study. I, I've taken workshops with Steve Houston. And he's one of my favorite teachers of all time. Would you take in-person classes again at some point? Uh... Yeah, I would. Why not? I'm moving your elbow out from your body a little bit. <laughs> I don't know why. I think it makes for a better composition. Yeah, like it's more interesting there. Yeah. I want to see your shoulder here. I think You're gonna give me a giant peck. I'm not gonna give you a giant peck. Why would I give you a giant oh, peck? No, a uh, bicep. I mean. A giant bicep. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> It's, I think it's actually a little bit bigger than this one. <laughs> Slightly. <laughs> it's a little bit bigger, so you're welcome. Thanks. 
Um, do, 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 do. All right, people saying anything about my drawing? Uh, well, not about your drawing, but people are asking questions. Cool. Um, any advice on starting personal projects, Stan? I'm training to be a fine artist, but it seems like I always end up grinding fundamentals. Personal, any advice on personal projects? Yeah. Um, I, I kind of want to know why you don't do personal projects. That, that's like the, the big thing here. Like what the advice here really needs to depend on the problem. Um, like for me, it was a huge part of my, my education was just like getting excited about something and then following through on bringing it to completion. Um, because you can't just be doing, you know, practicing homework all the time. You have to actually use your skills on something real. And, and that stuff sticks better when you, uh, when you apply the concepts you're learning in class to real projects. And it also, uh, it also will expose your weaknesses. It'll expose, um, some habits it'll just it'll just inform you more about how you should practice and study when you actually start to apply that stuff to real things because um, you can't just base what to study on on all your homework <laughs> like the homework you've done you can't determine what you need to prove on based on homework because um, homework usually is like a very specific exercises to do something really specific but then when you start getting into like doing something like a personal project it's got layers and layers of complexity and it's your opinions and in, in what uh, what you want to put into it and it, it just reveals so much more about you and your weaknesses and all that it's riskier for sure yeah just it just re reveals more information but yeah for sure it's riskier Have you ever made a work that was so good that it made you feel like the rest of your works after that can't reach that level? <laughs> I'm doing it right now. <laughs> yeah. This is your magnum opus, man. This is it. Yeah. If you can stop drawing after this. Um, I don't think so. I don't think I've ever done that. Mm -hmm. No. Um. Um, why is it so hard to be an intermediate artist? And how can you make sure you keep your morale up before you reach that industry and in industry standard quality? Wait, sorry, hold on. I'm trying to. Okay. What was the question? Why is it so hard to be an intermediate artist, and how can what you? What does that mean? Um, and how can you make sure you keep your morale up before you reach the industry standard quality? <sighs> hmm. Probably because you've gotten to the point where, like, you're really good at seeing your mistakes, right? Like, you you've developed your eye and your taste enough to where you you like. You could, you see exactly the difference between yours and some like a professional person's, and um, progress slows down the better you get, right? Like when you when you're a very when you're you're a pure beginner, you know absolutely nothing. You can watch one lesson, and and it makes a huge difference in your drawing quality, right? Like you 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 don't know anything about shading, all of a sudden you learn about like separating your lights and your shadows, and then you apply that and it's like, oh my God, <laughs> it actually looks okay all of a sudden, right? You're not gonna get those giant leaps of improvement when you're intermediate, starting to get into advanced. Everything is like super subtle, super subtle improvements that are hard to see, um, but your, your brain and your eye is more tuned to seeing mistakes and seeing that you're not like, as good yet and so it's really frustrating that you're moving slower 
uh, but you're also more aware of it. Um, so that's probably why it's difficult. The question was why? Yeah. Okay, that's probably why. Yeah, you just start becoming more critical of your own work, so you stop yeah. liking it as much. But also successfully critical of your own work. Yeah. You're act you actually know what's wrong with it at that point. And it's frustrating that you... You, you know exactly what's wrong with it, but it's you know it's going to take, like, a year for you to, like, get good enough at this thing that you're critical of. Um, and also, you just start realizing how much there is to learn to be, like, a really good artist. It's like you, you get good at, like, for me, I got really good at observational drawing. I spent 10 years on it, and then I was like, oh, I could draw from imagination? Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't think any... <laughs> professional artist i know feels good about their own work yeah there's just they, so they, much yeah you never so you much. never you know feel good about it even the you know pros the mega pros yeah self-critical because there's there's like there's like thousands of artists on instagram who you can compare yourself to with like a specific skill and they're going to be better at you at it like you might be good at um like designing cute characters right like you, you just that's what you like to do when you design cute characters but then you try to design like a house or like some tech stuff um and you just suck at it because that's not what you do but there's other people that are really good and you want to get good at it and then you learn it and then you're like okay now i could like do some some more like concept art vehicles and stuff and then you realize like wait but i haven't i haven't learned anything about composition and storytelling and I've spent 12 years like get, getting my, my skills up to this point where I'm like really good at character design and vehicle design, but I can't put together a piece that has good color in it and composition and all that stuff. It's like, and like you start getting into all these little things and comparing yourself to others that are masters at it. And it's like, there's just too many skills for a single artist to be good at all of them. Um, like you really have to spend like 30, 40 years before you're, actually really 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 well-rounded um in everything yeah jeff used to say that artists don't really start coming to their own in their 40s really just don't start i mean that's wrong i think in a certain sense but i see what he's saying <laughs> you know i, I mean <laughs> I, I think i think people can say can do really good artwork when they're really young but to have the confidence to do everything doesn't mm -hmm. you know it, it's in their 40s is when they start you know yeah probably true yeah i mean some some artists really do just get really really good at um at like a pretty young age but it it's probably very specific they're probably a very focused artist on like a specific thing you know like like let's say fashion for example right again like i love fashion he's like one of the the best oil painters i think ever but if you if you ask him to i like him jungi yeah, draw like Kim Jong Gi. He wouldn't be able to do it. He'd probably look at Kim Jong Gi and be like, "Wow, I can't do that." Like, I'm sure Fashion would be able to if he like spent years perfecting it, but he wouldn't be able to do that just like in a day. Do that kind of thing because he was so his brain was so tuned to doing what he did. Um, right. I think so, the people that become best yeah. at like the best artists are the people that love it the most. Like. Even when Kim Jong Gi wasn't that good, he was probably drawing all the time, um, just because he really liked it. And, um, and even now, if you meet him, he's uh, always, always drawing. He always has a sketchbook. Yeah. He is, literally. Like even in a, like a social setting. <laughs> like you, you, um, you know, if he. If he's eating dinner with his family, sometimes he's sketching. <laughs> or if he's like, he comes over to the studio. He's been to my studio. And he sat down on the couch and just started drawing, right? Like most people wouldn't, their first thought when they come to someone's studio wouldn't be to like, I got to draw. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, right. Yeah, no, yeah, I've yeah. never done that. Yeah, like yeah. I'm in someone's studio. It's my first time there and I want to draw. Like, No, I'm just there like socializing. Yeah. But that's the big difference is that his brain is always on drawing. Um. And like, yeah, he's got that advantage, but there's also disadvantages to that, I, I assume. Yeah, yeah. I'm well, sure you, if you ask him, he'll tell you what that means. What are the disadvantages of having your brain on drawing all the time? All right, I, I don't know. I feel like I'm done with this one. I like it. Cool. It's good drawing. Thank you. I think we're going to probably wrap it up since two and a half hours in. Yeah.
Do you want to answer one more question? Or? Um, here, yeah, sure. Ask the question. I got to look at my notes. Um, what is your opinion in the difference between teaching at a traditional atelier like Watts and other school or like online schools like CGMA? I, I guess I don't know if if the right, those specifics don't really matter because I think the question here is like physical versus online, right? I guess. That's really the, the essence of the question because I've never studied at CGMA, so I can't really give you personal experience like like I've only studied at Watts I haven't even really studied online <laughs> right right like I've watched lessons but I didn't I don't I never studied online in the way that you should be studying um, because by the time online edu like education got really good like I was already full on into like the business of teaching online so that's where my brain is um, the big difference, if you really want a good explanation for it, watch the Draftsman podcast series on recreating art school. Um, it's like a seven part series, seven episodes where we literally just break everything down. The difference between online and physical and how can you take all the stuff that you learn in a physical art school and recreate it on your own without going to a physical art school. Um, and the biggest, the biggest things I think I've said already, like, and what I'm focusing on with Proco 2.0 is that online, it's really difficult to get community. It's really difficult, difficult to get feedback. Um, certainly possible it's, it's available, but it's more difficult than if you're taking a class in a physical school. And so, um, you have to put more effort into trying to get that stuff and, and they're very important things to get. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, if you really want a detailed explanation of that, go watch the podcast series. It was the very beginning of season two. It's like the first seven episodes, season two. Proko.com slash draft. No, that'll take you somewhere else. Just go to Proko.com, search for Draftsman. It's one of the courses right now. Um, hold on. I guess I'll, I'll finish up by just talking about... Um, just the rest of the launch. I mean, I'm really, really excited to, to finally launch this website. I mean, we've been working on it for four years. Um, lots of people have been working on this, and it's, it, it's just so exciting to finally get, like, a large community in there using the features. Like, you know, we've been testing it with, like, internally, but it's just, like, so cool to see the interaction. Um, and so we're celebrating, again, Proko.com slash party. We're gonna do something really cool every day for, for like all the way through June. Lots of guests. Should I name some right now? Do it. Name drop some people. Nice. Okay, next week, and we haven't updated Proko.com slash party yet, but we will do it right after this. Um, or maybe we did already. Can you check? Uh, but, yeah. um, but anyway, next week, Monday we got Marco Bucci. He's got a free video coming out and also He's launching a color course. Um, Dorian Eaton, live stream on Tuesday. Uh, David Finch. <laughs> David Finch, live stream on Wednesday. Um, Andrew Keith, sculpting. For those of you that want that like sculpting, free video on sculpting on Thursday. Also, his pre-sale starts, so if you want to learn how to sculpt, um, it's, the, it's a beginner's sculpting course. Also going to be on pre on Thursday. And then next Friday, Ahmed Alduri, also free video. Uh, and also, I think he's going to put up some, some, some of his paid content as well, right? Yeah. Okay, but yeah. Free video with Ahmed and paid stuff. And I will also, on Friday, I'm also doing another live stream uh, town hall. So if you enjoyed it, I'll do this probably the same thing. I'll just sketch and talk. Nice. Yeah. Good job. Oh, uh, here, I'll, I'll, I'll name some more, actually. That, that's next. That's just next week. <laughs> that's yeah. just next week. Oh, man. I don't think we've ever done Tom Cruise. Tom, yeah, Tom Cruise. Bill Gates. The, the Rock. Yeah, the the rock. rock will be here. Rembrandt. Rembrandt. We, we resurrected Rembrandt. Rembrandt. And, yeah. Wow. Yeah. You mean Marshall's son? No. The, well, yeah, him, too. <laughs> oh, he's, yeah, he'll yeah, be here. Yeah. No. Yeah. no, he's kidding. Um. The following week, 
Uh, I'm just gonna mention the people that are like confirmed because some some we're still working on. But so Steven Zapata, uh, Jose Vega, uh, Slu. We're working with Slu. Uh, Jeremy Cranford. Oh yeah, Jeremy Cranford. Uh, He's awesome. He yeah he works at Blizzard. Um, he, he was a uh, art director for World of Warcraft, right? No. Well, he, he, Wiz- he works on Hearthstone. Well, currently. Yeah, yeah. But before. Wizards of the Coast. and I. I oh, Wizards of the Coast. Yeah. See? That's my, I, I, yeah, so. I don't play games. Sorry, guys. So, yeah. Anyway, he was an art director at, at Blizzard, and he still works at Blizzard. Um, and so what he's going he's gonna to be doing an AMA in the in the in the community so if you want to be a concept artist or you want to work in an entertainment industry get your portfolios ready to submit and he's going to critique your he, stuff he spe- his specific job title is uh i guess outsource man outsource art manager so he helps hire people for he helps Hearth- hire people hearthstone and you know <laughs> artists he's helps artists specifically not yeah. like well you know accountants and stuff yeah. like he help he help He's the guy in charge of hiring artists. So he, this is the guy you want to show your portfolio to. He's also a great guy. He's, he's also a wonderful he's person, great. yeah. So get your uh, portfolios ready to show Jeremy Cranford. He'll be in, in the community. Again, David Finch, Scott Flanders, Earshad, Drawbox, um, Artwad, Tiffany Mang, Court Jones, Eric and Meadow Gist, uh, Mitch Lee. I, always, I don't know how to say his last name. Louie? <laughs> yeah, we sorry ask. mitch i'm so sorry it's spelled liui uh but yeah anyway mitch is awesome uh rembert not rembrandt yeah we got rembert rembert montal live stream dom lay aaron blaze carl and of course on Monday, Carlo Ortiz is judging the Proco Challenge. Have we even announced that? No, we haven't. Oh, yeah, Carl, yeah, 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 Carlo yeah, Ortiz yeah. is judging the, the challenge, and we got like we got like eight sponsors giving away prizes. So th- there's gonna be so Packers. many prizes. Uh, it's, ZBrush. Zebra, yeah, lots, lots of prizes. Anyway, it's a really exciting guy. I'm pretty sure everybody has left the stream. <laughs> we have uh, 519 viewers. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thanks, guys, for sticking around. Um, I'm, I'm probably the most excited about this right now than anybody watching, so I'm sorry for... I guess I'm not sorry. Um, and then I'll probably conclude the whole thing by drawing a kangaroo. Okay, I have to. I think enough people asked that... People, people were continuing to ask. Yeah. About the kangaroo? Yeah. Yeah. I guess I can't not do it. I'll finish. I'll finish off this whole launch party with the kangaroo drawing. It'll probably be more like a longer drawing, though. It's not gonna be like a from Imagine Eight thing anymore. I'm gonna actually try to do a good kangaroo. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Kangaroos are awesome, right? They're pretty. They're pretty amazing. They're pretty awesome. I should do a kangaroo punching me in the face. You should. Or are you riding a kangaroo? Hmm. So what the kangaroo looks like. I think I want to do a portrait. I want to do mostly a portrait because I want to get some detail. And so if I like have like a a kangaroo face and then my face and then just like an uppercut, I don't have to do any of like the body. I could just like two faces and a fist coming up. This one's pretty buff. I like that one. Have you not seen the buff kangaroos? <laughs> I guess I have. Should I do a buff kangaroo drawing? Yeah. <laughs> I love the buff kangaroos. Yeah. You should search buff kangaroo because there's better ones than that. If anybody has not seen Buff Kangaroos, you're in for a treat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that's it. Yeah, oh, Perkin Homestead's wow. party. Um, thank you thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Yeah, thank you. Really appreciate the whole community. Um, and if you don't awesome. know yet, we just launched Proco 2.0. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, let's end the stream. Okay, uh, uh, how do we do this? I'm new at this. Okay, all done. Do, 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 do.